We are continuing on with our live cooking demos. So I'm here every Tuesday, um, we're kind of switching up the cooking series a little bit to be more demo focused and to really make sure that you're getting something out of each demo, that there's specific things that you'll learn, um, you know, and hopefully a specific kind of technique or, you know, knife skill or just learning something about cooking, getting some sort of inspiration that the hope is that you'll walk away from every demo, um, you know, with a real tangible thing that you learned. So we're still focused on a seasonal, uh, you know, seasonal food focus. Um, because we love seasonal food for the nutrient benefits, the flavor benefits, the environmental benefits, the cost benefits. So there's a lot of great reasons to eat seasonally. Um, and it can be a great way to add some variety into your diet by looking towards what's in season for inspiration for what to eat to kind of get you out of a food rut, to kind of get you out of your typical routine of buying the same produce. Um, this is a great way to inspire you to change it up. You'll notice, I know the last couple times I've gone grocery shopping, there's just squash everywhere, right? It's, it's squash season with acorn squash, spaghetti, butternut, pumpkin, right? You'll see all different kinds of squash. Um, so just taking a look around your store, seeing what's on sale. A lot of times that's a good indication of something that's in season. So just a good way to kind of um, switch it up. So today's demo is focused on broccoli. So... Um, so broccoli is in season in the fall, um, along with other cruciferous vegetables. So broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable that's a, um, in the same family as things like cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and all of these things you'll find um, in abundance in the fall. So it's a great time to add some more of these kinds of cruciferous vegetables into your diet. They have tons of health benefits. Um, they're filled with a lot of fiber, which is great for our digestive health, heart health, um, for blood sugar control, which isn't just something to consider, you know, if you have diabetes, blood sugar control is just important for our everyday life, for our energy, for our mood, um, for your focus, for a lot of different, uh, a lot of different reasons. So getting that fiber in every day is, is really, um, is really good for your health in general. So you get a lot of fiber in broccoli, we're gonna get a lot of antioxidants, vitamin C in there, things to help boost our immune system, some anti-inflammatory properties. Um, and like I said, you'll find these kinds of, this kind of real heavy nutrient profile in all these cruciferous vegetables. So they're really great um, to add into your diet. But we don't always like to eat just pieces of broccoli, right? It's kind of like that image of what a typical healthy meal is. We, you know, see a picture of just like a piece of plain chicken with some plain brown rice and some plain steamed broccoli on the plate. And I, that sounds very bland and boring to me. So that's always my motivation here is to inspire you to get a little creative and kind of show you that nutritious food doesn't have to be so bland and boring. So maybe adding more broccoli into your diet doesn't mean forcing yourself to eat pieces of broccoli if you don't love broccoli or that you don't have to eat it that way all the time. So there's a lot of different ways that we can use our fresh produce and kind of transform it into something a little bit different, um, you know, and, and still be able to get those nutrients in in different ways. So today we are making a broccoli pesto, which sounds a little untraditional, um, but the basic ingredients of the pesto are pretty traditional. And then we're just adding broccoli in there to really boost up that nutrient profile of it, um, like I said, as a different, you know, different way to, to get the broccoli in. So the first thing we need to do is cook the broccoli, but we're just going to like partially cook it. And we're going to do that by blanching it. So if you've been following along with the cooking series um, for a while now, we've done blanching before. So like I said, it's a kind of cooking method that helps you to partially cook something. Um, or I mean, in some cases it is kind of getting it to a fully cooked point, but it's, it's really just taking it out of that raw state. So even for something like, um, you know, if you're putting out veggies with a dip, you know, like a little crudite kind of platter, you wouldn't really want to put out raw broccoli florets. You could, right? But you probably prefer the taste and the texture of broccoli that's been a little bit cooked. 
So we can chop up the heads of broccoli into florets and we can blanch them in some boiling water and that takes them from raw to, you know, a little bit cooked. So it changes the flavor and the texture of it. So in this case, we want to blanch the broccoli florets to use in the pesto. So rather than just putting raw broccoli in the pesto, um, we want to just cook it up a little bit before we make the pesto. So first thing we need to do is cut up our um, cut up our head of broccoli into broccoli florets. Of course, you could skip this step and you could buy already, you know, packaged broccoli florets. But this is one of those nice skills that I hope you can walk away from this demo feeling a little bit more confident to cut up your own broccoli florets because it really is pretty simple. So I'm going to show you that. So. Um, so definitely if you do make this recipe um, on your own, I have, like I said, I have, um, oh now I'm blocking it, over here, <laughs> I have a pot of water that's just boiling, um, that's all you need to blanch, it's just a pot of boiling water, um, so that's already set up. So we'll get right into cutting up the florets. So I'm going to move my camera down so you can see. Okay. So the um, recipe for the pesto calls for three cups of broccoli florets, um, which is about a head of broccoli, but these are both pretty small, so I'm just gonna chop them both up and, and I'll get the three cups from there. So the first thing that I do to start getting the florets is just cut off that, that base part, and that will already kind of separate them. So you see already some of them just kind of fall right off. So already we have a few broccoli florets without even doing anything but cutting off that bottom piece. And then depending on what you're using them for, um, you know, you can cut the stems a little bit shorter if you want. We don't, you know, we can use the stems here because it's all just going to go into the pesto and the stems actually just provide even more nutrients. And then what we can do, so this is what we have remaining. So now you just kind of go around and just cut right through the stems and the florets will just fall off. I want to get a little bit closer to you here. So you just cut right through the stems and the florets just fall right off. See? And then here I can just kind of cut the rest of this base off here. And there we go. So it really is pretty simple. So what I'm saying about the size is you can see that you know some of them fell off and they're much smaller. So when you are cooking, you know, in general, you want to try to get your pieces to be of equal size so that they all cook evenly. So we can take some of the bigger ones and just simply cut them in half so that they're all generally around the same size. And that is really it. So this getting them to the same size doesn't matter quite as much um, with blanching, you know, with, with what we're doing here. But if you were cooking them, say, um, you know, if you're cooking them like in a stir fry or if you're roasting them and you're really, you know, you really want them all to cook up at the same pace, then you just want to be a little bit more diligent about cutting them all to be, you know, as equal pieces, you know, as equal size as they can be. You always have some that are like extra tiny, right? We don't need to cut them all to be this small. That's just how it fell off of the head of the broccoli. Um, but just generally trying to get them as close to the same size as you can. Okay, so I'll show one more time with the other head here. Move these guys over. I'll move this a little bit closer. Okay. So we start just by cutting off that end there. And then we had a couple florets kind of fall off and then the rest of it, we just go around and just slice the little florets right off. So it really is nice and easy. smaller. All right. So that's it. So that is how we get our florets from our head of broccoli. So you can do this anytime you need broccoli florets. 
Again, it's like I always say, getting things that are pre-cut and pre-packaged is great for convenience and certainly has a time and place. I will not knock, you know, the convenience factor of these things. Um, but like I've mentioned before, you just don't, you know, you, you start to lose the integrity of the produce once it's been cut into. So if it's been sitting, you know, packaged, all cut up for a few days, it's going to start to lose its texture. It's, it's going to start to lose its nutrient value a little bit. So the more that, you know, you can buy a whole piece of produce and break it down yourself, you're going to just get the most benefit from that produce and you're also going to get more bang for your buck that way. Um, okay, so that is the first step. We got our florets cut. So now we're ready to blanch. So to blanch, like I said, I just have a pot of boiling water here. Um, in this case, I'm not going to season the water. So um, if you were doing this, say, for, like I said, for like a crudite and you're using the vegetables to dip or you just want to have them, blanching is a really great um, cooking method for preserving your vegetables too. So if you have... Um, if you have produce in the fridge that needs to get cooked up so that it doesn't go bad, blanching it is a really quick, easy way just to get it cooked a little bit so that, you know, you slow down its aging process so that it won't spoil. And then once you have it blanched, then at least, like I said, it's just, a you know, it's a step further than it being raw. So now you have something that's a little bit more cooked that you can toss into salads or, you know, whatever, whatever else. Or if you have blanched broccoli, then it's already partially cooked and it makes it much quicker to, you know, cook it up in a stir fry or something like that. So if you were to serve the broccoli straight from blanched, maybe like a, like a crudite, you could season the water, the boiling water with salt, and then that will add saltiness to the broccoli, so it will season the broccoli. In this case, we're not going to do that because we're adding, we're making the pesto and we're going to season that up. So I'm just keeping the water as is. So we're just adding the broccoli florets right into the boiling water. And we just want to give them a quick stir. Just make sure they're all nice and submerged in there. You can stir it around like once or twice through the, you know, through the process. I'm using a spider strainer so that I'm able to scoop them out and let the water drain. You could also use a slotted spoon for this. The broccoli florets blanch very quickly. They only take like, depending on how big the pieces are, again, if you have smaller florets, it'll be like 30 seconds. Um, but this will probably be more like 45 seconds to a minute. Um, and again, it depends on what you're blanching it for, how much of a crunch you want to leave or how soft you want it to get. The other step in the blanching process is to shock the cooked broccoli. So I have a bowl here of cold water and I'm gonna add some ice cubes to it. Okay, so this is an ice bath. So it's cold water with ice cubes. And what the shocking method does is it takes the broccoli from the hot water that it's blanching in and stops the cooking process so that the broccoli doesn't get overcooked. And this is with anything that, that you're blanching. So we're gonna take the broccoli right from the boiling water. All right, and this is to be done already. So we're gonna take the broccoli right from the boiling water and put it right into the ice bath and that will shock it and stop the heat from continuing to run through the broccoli so that it stops cooking. So nice and easy. Okay, so that is now in the ice bath. We're gonna just swirl it around a minute, let them get nice and cooled. And then before we make the pesto, we wanna let the broccoli kind of dry a little bit so it's not like soaking wet in the pesto because that will, that will get too much water into the pesto and it won't get to the consistency that we want. So we can take the broccoli out of the ice bath and we're gonna just lay it right on a clean dish towel that I have here. 
and just let it dry a little bit. So blanching, of course, is just another, like we talked about roasting, this is another great healthy cooking method. Um, but of course, with this method, you're not getting, you know, you're not getting the color and you're not getting like that caramelization and the texture like we talked about that you get from roasting. So that's why this is really a nice method either for as like a first step and then you're going to be doing something else with the, with the veggies. Or again, like I said, it's just taking it from raw to a little bit cooked if you're using it, um, you know, in a salad or to serve or to serve, you know, with a dip or something like that. Okay. All right, so let me move my cutting board and stuff out of the way and we'll pull in the food processor to make the pesto. So we're using a food processor for the pesto. And okay, so we'll gather the rest of the ingredients while um, the broccoli just dries off a little bit. So we're basing this as like a traditional basil pesto. So I'm using basil here, um, but you don't have to use basil. That's the thing with pesto too, is you can really kind of switch up um, the fresh herbs that are in it. You could even not use fresh herbs if you didn't want that flavor. We're using a cup of fresh basil here. You could use a cup of like baby spinach or a cup of some other leafy green if you wanted to. Um, you could put parsley in instead of basil or do half basil, half parsley, you know, whatever, whatever you really like. Okay, so we're going to have a cup of fresh basil. I have sitting on this towel too, I'm just collecting it. So everything for the pesto is just going right into the food processor. Okay, so we got a cup of fresh basil. We're going to have a third of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, or you could use pecorino, you could use a combination. We're using two cloves of garlic or one really fat clove of garlic. Again, to your preference. So, you know, if you don't, if you don't love things that are strong, you know, strongly garlic flavored, you can use one clove. Okay, so this one and two. We have the juice of half of a lemon. Yeah, so, the, so these two small heads of broccoli that I started with is just about um, three cups, just a few extra pieces laying there. So that's why I say it's, it should be about one, you know, pretty like large head of broccoli or two smaller ones like I just used. Um, okay, and then a half a teaspoon of, whoop, half a teaspoon of salt. And a few grinds of freshly cracked, um, freshly ground black pepper, or just like a nice pinch of black pepper. The salt and pepper will taste and adjust the seasoning as needed. And okay, so that's everything that goes into the food processor. And then we remove the top of the processor. 
and we're going to drizzle a third of a cup of olive oil into the top. So by drizzling it in slowly as we're pulsing the food processor, it helps to emulsify everything rather than just adding all the olive oil in. Um, this helps to really mix it in there rather than other, if you just add the olive oil right into the base, you'll end up kind of with like a pool of olive oil on the bottom. It doesn't really mix in well. So we'll drizzle it in from the top. So we're using a third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. So for something like a pesto, we like to use extra virgin olive oil because you get the most flavor from that versus olive oil, right? So there's a difference between extra virgin olive oil and olive oil. Olive oil has been more processed. It's better for cooking, for high heat, for roasting, for things like that. Whereas the extra virgin olive oil has that, um, has a much stronger olive flavor. So we like to use it for things that we really taste it in, like a pesto, a homemade vinaigrette, um, you know, just drizzling over a salad, drizzling over, you know, something to like finish a dish, something where you're really tasting it, or like a dip for bread, that's where you want to use the extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so we're going to just start pulsing, and as we pulse, we will pour the olive oil in. So at this point you could taste it, um, see if you need any more salt and pepper. Okay, so this is it. So it gets nice and like really bright green. The blanching process helps brighten the color of the broccoli. So it's really bright green when it gets added in. So we get a really beautiful color on the pesto. Um, like I said, it's extra, it's extra nutritious pesto because it has the broccoli in it. So we're getting all those nutrient benefits, um, plus a ton of flavor with things like the basil, lemon juice, garlic, um, and the, and the extra virgin olive oil. So it's really delicious. Um, you can use this pesto the same way that you would use any other pesto. Um, so toss it with pasta or some sort of grain, spread it on a sandwich or a wrap, um, you could use it just like spread it, you know, use it with protein, like spread it over chicken to bake it, um, you know, cook shrimp in it. You know, you can just put pesto on any sort of protein and throw it on the grill, throw it in the oven, throw it in the pan. Um, it kind of works as like a, you know, like a, a sauce almost for, for protein. Um, and that's it. So, okay, so in this demo, we learned how to chop up a head of broccoli into florets. We learned how to blanch and shock. And we talked about why we would blanch and shock. And we learned how to make the broccoli pesto.